بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل لا ومن يدلل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed the praise is for Allah. We praise him, we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils that are within ourselves and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can lead this person astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, there is no guide for him. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshiped except for Allah who is alone with our partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the servant of Allah and the last messenger to all of mankind. O oh, you who believe fear Allah with the right that he should be feared with and do not die unless you are Muslims. O oh, mankind fear your Lord who has created you from a single person and from that person created his mate and from them to scatter countless men and women. and fear Allah from who you demand your mutual rights and do not cut off the relations with the wombs that have bore you indeed Allah is a all watcher over you all you who believe fear Allah and say that which is correct and upright in order that Allah may rectify for you your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger has achieved a tremendous achievement As to what follows certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil of the affairs are the newly invented matters in the religion and every newly invented matter in the religion is innovation and every innovation is going astray and every going astray is in the hellfire our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned man tashabbaha bi qaumin fa huwa minhu that whoever imitates a people he is from them with this narration the ulama of islam have extracted the prohibition of imitating the disbelievers it is not permissible for us as muslims we have our own way of life our own creed our own ideology our own methodology is not permissible for us as muslims to imitate the disbelievers in those affairs that are specifically for them from their creed from their practices from their methodology from their identity and other than that we have our own identity we have our own methodology we have our own way of life our own creed So we should be satisfied with that which Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has legislated for us from the ways of the disbelievers that is prohibited for us to follow the men disputing and debating with the Quran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he mentions ma yujadilu fi ayatillah 
إِلَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا No one disputes and argues regarding the verses of Allah except for those who disbelieve. What's meant by this as Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala he stated مَا يَدْفَعَ الْحَقِّ وَيُجَادِلْ فِيهِ بَعْدَ الْبَيَانِ وَظُهُورِ الْبُرْحَانِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَيْ الْجَاهِدُونَ لِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَحُجْجِهِ وَبُرَاهِينِ Al-Hafidh ibn Kathir he explained the verse he means he's to mean no one rejects the truth no one rejects the truth and disputes regarding it after the clarity and after the proofs have become manifest except for those who disbelieve. Meaning those who reject the verses of Allah, those who reject the proofs and evidences of Allah. This is what is meant by disputing with the Quran, meaning you reject the Quran. This is from the methodology and the ways of the disbelievers. If something comes to you from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept it because it's the truth. And it's for our guidance. It's the truth and it's for our guidance. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, This is the book, there is no doubt in it. Guidance for the people who have taqwa. The Quran is a book and a source of guidance. And it is upon us to base our lives upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the disbelievers, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will come to them with the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will reject these verses. They will look at these verses as being a source of misguidance and that their way, the ways of jahiliyyah, the ways of ignorance, were superior to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must never look at the ways of Jahiliyyah to be superior to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ways of Jahiliyyah include the pre-Islamic times of ignorance from the street life as well as the paganistic practices that the people had before Islam. Nothing is superior to Islam. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Al-Islam ya'lu wa la yu'la. That Islam is superior and it never is inferior. Islam is superior. So Islam is to govern our lives. Abu Ali rahimahullah ta'ala, he stated, Ayatan, ma ashaddahuma ala ladhina yujariluna fil Qur'an. And then he mentioned the statement of Allah, ma yujarilu fi ayati Allah illa ladhina kafaru. And he mentioned the statement of Allah, wa inna ladhina akhtalafu fil kitab la fi shikaqin ba'id. Abu Ali rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that nothing is more or how severe are the two verses in the book of Allah upon those who dispute with the Quran. Meaning these two verses he's going to mention are strong and severe upon those who reject the Quran and those who dispute regarding the Quran. He mentions the statement of Allah and no one disputes regarding the Quran or regarding the ayat of Allah except for those who disbelieve. That's the first verse. The second verse he mentions the statement of Allah. Indeed those who differ regarding the book, these individuals are in a far off misguidance and misery and indecisiveness. These people are misguided. They, and they're far astray. These individuals are not close to guidance. Abu Ali, rahimahullah, he mentioned these two verses. There's nothing more severe upon those people who dispute and reject the haq that comes from the Quran than these two verses. Because one verse Allah describes those who dispute with the Quran as being disbelievers. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes those who dispute and debate and differ with the Qur'an as being individuals who are far astray. No one in their right mind, no one with Iman, no Muslim wants to be a disbeliever. No Muslim wants to be far astray. No Muslim wants to be in a state of misery. This is the description of those who disbelieve and the hypocrites and the likes. We don't want to imitate these people. Because if we imitate these people, then that which they get, we will get also. Because of us performing the same actions. 
So understand, there is a punishment that comes with imitating the disbelievers and imitating the hypocrites and imitating the people of wickedness and the people who are corrupt. And likewise, there's a reward when we imitate the righteous. When we strive to be like the people of piety, when we strive to be like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a good reward that comes with that. So we have the two paths in front of us. The path, the path of righteousness and the path of corruption. So which one do we choose? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentioned, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابِ الْحَقِّ that is because Allah, He revealed the book in truth, meaning they received the punishment of Allah for rejecting the Qur'an and rejecting that which Allah has revealed because Allah has sent down the book in truth, meaning there's nothing but the haq inside of the Qur'an. So when a person debates and disputes the Qur'an, he's debating and rejecting the truth. And when you debate and reject the truth, then you are entitled to the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he stated, يَعْنِ ذَلِكَ الْعَدَابِ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابِ الْحَقِّ فَأَنْكَرُوا وَكَفَرُوا بِهِ Al-Imam al-Baghawi, he mentioned that the meaning of the statement of Allah is that that punishment is for them because Allah has sent down the book in truth. And then they rejected it. They rejected the truth and they disbelieved in the truth. So they are entitled to the punishment. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi yajma'een amma ba'd Al-Imam Zuhri rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned Min Allah al-Risala Wa ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Balaag Wa alayna al-Taslim Al-Imam Zuhri rahimahullah, he mentioned that the revelation is from Allah. And conveying the revelation is upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that which is upon us is submission. Meaning Allah is the one who has sent down the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the one who conveys it to the people. He is the one who teaches the people and shows the people the right way. And once the truth reaches us, it's upon us to submit to the truth. It's upon us to adhere to the truth. It's upon us to accept the truth and make the truth our way of life. And have no aversion towards the truth. Have nothing in our hearts towards the truth. Because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, فَلَا وَرَبِّ لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions no by your Lord meaning he's talking to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no by your Lord they do not truly believe until they make you meaning you are Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the judge and that which they dispute in amongst themselves. And then they find no aversion in their hearts towards that which you have judged with. And they submit with full submission. Three matters Allah mentions here. Three matters that we all are in need of in order for our faith to be intact. Whenever something takes place in our lives, whenever there's a dispute in our lives, whenever there's a matter of confusion in our lives, we return back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the answer, for the solution. He's the last prophet and messenger to all of mankind and he came with the truth. So when we find disputes, whether it's between husband and wife, brother and brother, sister and sister, parent and child, whether in business, marriage, any affair, we return back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
for the judgment. We make him the judge. Because what is he judging with? He's judging with the book of Allah. He's judging by way of the revelation. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa uli amri minkum fa in tanazza'tum fi shay'in furudduhu ila Allah wa Rasul. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority from amongst you and if you differ in anything, refer it back to Allah and the messenger. Allah is not going to command us to refer a matter of differing back to him and the messenger if the solution is not there. The reason why Allah tells us to refer back to him and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because in the Quran and in the Sunnah there is the solution to the problem. Different from the ways of the disbelievers when they use their emotions as the judge. When they use the quote unquote street code as the judge and the street code changes from one era to another. Things that used to be wrong in the street now is acceptable in the street. Come on, we know. Things that were acceptable no longer acceptable. That street code flips from time to time, but the Quran and the Sunnah stays the same. It never changes throughout the history of Islam. The Quran and Sunnah has never changed and is suitable for all times. As for the street code, one street code in one neighborhood may not be applicable in another neighborhood, but the Quran and the Sunnah is applicable in every neighborhood. So Allah says, refer back to Allah and the Messenger. So the Prophet Sallallahu is to be made the judge in, every, in any and everything that we dispute in. And then, number two, we can't have anything in our hearts against that judgment. And number three, we submit with full submission. The noble scholar, Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Si'ri, rahimahullah, he mentioned making the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the judge in all of the disputes. This is the station of Islam. And then removing any aversion in our hearts from the judgment, this is the station of Iman, that's higher. And then submitting with full submission is the station of Ihsan. And these are the three levels of the deen. And whoever completes these levels, he has completed the deen in its entirety. The Prophet Muhammad is the judge, nothing in your heart against it, you submit with full submission. Allah he mentions in the Quran Yahdi Lilati Hiya Aqwa. Indeed, this Quran it guides to that which is more upright, that which is more just. And the character of the Prophet was the Quran, as Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned. And that's how our character must be. Our character must be the character of the Quran. You want to be a stand-up dude? Make your character the character of the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a real man. And he was a stand-up individual. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't a fake. He wasn't a phony. He wasn't a coward. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up for the truth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a man of integrity. So you want to be a stand-up individual, then let your character be the character of the Quran. As Aisha radiallahu anha described him, Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was that of the Quran. And Allah said about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are upon exalted character. I will share with the brothers an incident that took place in the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. There was an individual by the name of Sahabi radiallahu anhu, Riyan ibn Husn. He went to visit his cousin Al-Hur ibn Qais. And Al-Hur ibn Qais, he was from the scholars from amongst the Sahaba. And he was one who used to be in the gathering of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu who would give him advice. So Riyan said to him, get me a sitting with Umar ibn Khattab. So he took him to Umar ibn Khattab and he said, oh commander, he said, you are not just. You don't give us, you don't judge by that which is just. So Umar became upset. Because here it is, he's accusing Umar of that which he is free from. 
So Umar, he went to punish him. So Al-Hur, he said, O oh, commander of the believers, Allah said, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُلْ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَأَعْرِدْ عَنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ وَإِنَّهُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ He said, O oh, commander of the believers, Allah says, pardon and enjoin that which is good and turn away from the ignorant. And indeed, he is from the ignorant. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said about Umar ibn Khattab, that Umar ibn Khattab, he did not say anything else. Once he heard the Quran, he stopped. He wanted to punish him and he had right to punish him because of the slander. And he's, he's the commander of the believers and he's being disrespectful. When the Sahabi recited the verse to him from the Quran, Umar ibn Khattab, he stopped. He didn't make a move, he didn't do anything to him. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, كَانَ عُمَّ وَقَّافًا عِنْدَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ That Umar ibn Khattab was an individual, he will always stop at the book of Allah. That whenever Allah says something, that's where he stopped at. This is to be our character. Whatever Allah says, that's what we stand on. We don't go to nothing, we don't leave off the book of Allah for anything other than the book of Allah. If we leave out the book of Allah or a portion of the book of Allah, that's because that matter is abrogated by something else in the book of Allah, something of that nature. Right? But other than that, we don't abandon the book of Allah. We don't leave off the practice of an ayah unless the ayah is abrogated and we know it's abrogated. Or it's something that's general, that's explained by something specific. So we go to that which is specific over that which is general. And in reality, this is implementing the book of Allah. This is not abandoning the book of Allah. But to leave the book of Allah for some street code, to leave the book of Allah for some practice of somebody's culture, to leave the book of Allah for the American way or other than that, this is misguidance. This is misguidance and it's deviance and it's misery. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, he stood on the Quran. Whenever he heard the book of Allah, that's what he stood on. He didn't go, he didn't go beyond the boundaries. So we should learn a lesson from this incident with Umar Khattab. And the scholars, they mention, مَنْ لَمْ يُكْرِمْ الْعِلْمِ لَا يُكْرِمُهُ الْعِلْمِ That whoever does not honor the knowledge, and believe me, what's intended here by the knowledge is the Quran and the Sunnah. So whoever does not honor the Quran and the Sunnah, the Quran and the Sunnah is not going to honor him. You want honor, then you must honor the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you will be honored by the revelation. But you have to give in order to receive. You have to give honor in order to receive honor. You have to give honor, meaning to Allah's deen, in order to be honored in Allah's deen. But if you disrespect the deen of Allah, if you belittle the deen of Allah, then you are the one who is belittled. You are the one who is insignificant according to the deen. Forget your street cred. Forget your status out there amongst the criminals. You want to be someone who has status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what counts at the end of the day. Street cred means nothing if you don't have credibility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being someone who is popular amongst a tribe doesn't mean nothing if you're not known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being righteous and upright. So get your priorities in order. Make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what's most important in your life. But this is where your salvation is. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who hear a good word and follow it. و سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك أكمل